All right, so for this one, we did The Phantom of the Opera, the original 1925 film. Now, I am actually, I haven't seen many of the old silent films, but I am, I'm quite fond of what I have seen. I mean, thus far it's been Metropolis, The Man Who Laughs, and now this. Um, all very good movies. Like, this is very good. Um, I think this is definitely uh, a very good film to watch if you like the musical and want to see where it started. Because if I remember, if, if I remember correctly, you said this one is much, much closer to the book than mm -hmm. any other adaptation yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, for those who probably don't know, she is probably the biggest Phantom of the Opera fan that I've ever met. I am a huge Phantom nerd. Why I have a souvenir program from the original movie. Um, I started out watching the musical in high school, and I just I fell in love with the story. So I decided, you know, to go read the book, and then I realized that there were so many other adaptations of Phantom. Like even Goosebumps has an adaptation of Phantom. Like it's a very universal story. Um, it's really good. Lon Chaney is amazing. It was amazing at what he could do for a silent film actor, which a lot of it was with his makeup. He was called the man of a thousand faces for a reason. He carried around his makeup case everywhere he went. And like the things that he did for his phantom makeup was just amazing. Like he pinned his nose back and like his nose would bleed constantly, but he did it for the movie. He did it for the craft. Like he was very into his work. Yeah, he used I think cotton and um, like that. It was like a grease gas kind of mixture. Yeah, what they used to use for photographs back in the day, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, he used that to make his cheeks more pronounced. Um, when he and the way he pulled his nose up, you could actually see some of his gum above his teeth, which gave it a more even more, uh, you know, weird feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but to give a little bit of perspective on, you know, how into this she is, I can see three phantom action figures from where I'm sitting. And in the bedroom we have an autographed, um, I have a movie poster that I got autographed by Ron Chaney, which is, um, Lon Chaney's great-great-grandson. Like, I met him at a convention a few years ago, and he was just amazing, like, amazing to talk to. Didn't charge me for an autograph like most people at conventions. He was like, yeah. no, I'm not charging. That's my grandfather's work. So I'm like, okay, I want to buy something from your table, which turns out to be this amazing souvenir program. Yeah. Which, like, one of the coolest things in here is the um map of the opera house like yeah. this is like if you're a fan like i am this is an amazing thing to have yeah like so so dealing with this film um the first version of phantom i saw was the gerard butler musical uh film. which that was my first too um and I, I had a vague-ish idea of the story before I saw that version. Um, having seen that version and kind of seen how things went, um, I was able to better appreciate, I think, this version. Um, and I will say, uh, and this is something that she uh, agrees with me on, the Mask of the Red Death costume that he uses is quite good in this one. Oh, that's amazing. Like the, it's my favorite part. It's a, it's like a full skull head mask that, you know, and I mean, the robes all look great. You know, it's just a very well done. Yeah. And I think that probably is also just up to Lon Chaney's, yeah. you know, dedication. 
I mean, and it's pretty solid performances all around. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I mean, you know, Lon Chaney obviously does a fantastic job. Um, is it Mary Philbin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mary Philbin as Christine does a, uh, d d does a great job. Um, I mean, I feel like I feel like we don't really need to talk about the plot much because I feel like most of you have seen some version of Phantom. Yeah, very universal. Or if not, you've seen some form of parody of Phantom or reference, like. Basically, Christine Daae is an opera singer. Um, she is in love with a Vicomte de Chagny, which is uh, Raoul. Um, Phantom is in love with her. He taught her how to sing, and he wants her for his own, so he kidnaps her and takes her to his lair. And Raoul comes to her rescue, and she has to choose between the Phantom or Raoul, because if she doesn't choose a the Phantom, then Raoul's going to die. And then he, it's a trap anyway. <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> yeah, um... And... You know, so something we've talked about is later versions of the story try to romanticize the Phantom. They make yeah. him, you know, they make him very attractive, at least on one half of his face. And in this one, he's a straight up Monster. criminal. Yeah. Like, he's straight up, this is straight up kidnapping and assault. Yeah, in this one and some of the earlier versions, he's a criminal. In the musical, they make him out to be a genius. Like, he, he's, a mis he's misunderstood Yeah. that she should love him instead of Raul. Um, like he got his childhood taken away from him. Like, in the musical um, version, they say that, you know, he's been disfigured since he was a child. And he was in a freak show. Mm -hmm. And um, Madame Jerry, the lady that runs the ballet part of the opera, she... Um, takes him and you know hides him in the cellars of the in the sewers of the opera house and that's where you know he learned to like he learned to write music he's a magician like he's a, he's painted as a genius yeah like he's like he's an amazing person he's just misunderstood but in the originals you don't know his backstory at all he's yeah. just a criminal that lives in the sewers of the Paris opera house. and and when we say criminal me we mean he was l literally convicted of crimes yeah and exiled to an island and escaped yeah um but I, and i think you know i think everything comes across very well um which i mean I know I'm not an expert on silent movies, but I feel like they knew what they were doing. They did a good job of getting the message across, even with their limited, you know, technology. Um, that also plays a part to Lon Chaney as an actor, too. Like, yes. even though it's silent, like, you can, like, his his performance is amazing. A lot of it has to do with his parents were deaf mutes. So he's very expressive, especially with his hands. So he knows how to mm -hmm. get the audience captivated because and, of that. I mean, even when you can't see his face, because I mean, his face is covered for a large chunk of the yeah. movie. Even then, you still like, you know, you're still drawn to him because he has that energy about him. Mm -hmm. Just very, very good. And I, knowing what I do. And I've mentioned this before to her. I feel like Lon Chaney should be legendary among actors, particularly of that era. And yet, I hadn't really heard of him until she started telling me about Phantom. Which, I, I, now I kind of feel gypped. One of my major like issues is... I consider Phantom a universal monster movie. Like, even whenever there was... Like, I actually have one of these. Because it's in the um, program. Um, they did stamps with all the universal monster movies. And they used Phantom. Huh. Yeah. Like, there's a picture of all of them. But it's not considered a universal monster movie. I don't know why. I think it might end up... It might have ended up being a rights thing. Maybe, but Never. I consider I consider Phantom one of the monsters. Like, if I do a marathon, I always 
put Phantom in there whenever I'm watching Dracula and Frankenstein and and Wolfman, mm. which stars his son. Yeah, and the, you know, an in, you know, interesting small snippet for me personally is that this is, you know, to date the oldest feature length film that I uh, that I've seen. I have seen some films that were made prior to this, but they were the, like, a quick, you know, 12 seconds, or I think there's one that's, like, 6 seconds, that's the mm -hmm. beheading of Mary Queen of Scots, like, so I've seen some that are older than this, but this is the oldest feature-length film that I've seen, mm -hmm. um, which is just kind of interesting, um, you know, I, I, need, I need to see more silent films, because, like, I, I am... As an like you know, as an actor, I'm very interested in the techniques that were used in silent films to portray these stories, to get the message across, and all and all the various things that went into that. Um, you know, you know, from a technical aspect, I'm fascinated by the transition from black and white to color and how that changed the way movies were made. So, you know, things. Movies like this, especially with Lon Chaney's skill, really highlight, you know, how good people were back then mm -hmm. and how good you had to be to be on that higher level yeah. as an actor. So that's just, you know, a very interesting thing to me personally. You know, I'm not I like I'm not a massive filmmaking, you know, aficionado. Like, you know, I, I didn't study film in college or anything, but I am interested in acting techniques and some of the technical aspects of the bigger shifts in cinema over the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so um, the original Phantom of the Opera, I think it's just up on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, it's public domain. Like, yeah. I have I have two copies of it. I wanted a standalone copy, so I got that. But I also have this um, collection. It's like 50 horror movies, mm -hmm. and all of them are public domain. Like, it has a lot of Bella Lugosi stuff on it, too. Yeah. Like, it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. Um, I highly recommend it because I'm a phantom nerd, but... Yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's very good, especially, you know, if you look into you know, some of the production and things that went into making it. Um, like, like we said, you can find it just up on YouTube, like actually several old silent movies. Um, you can find copies, uh, you know, DVD copies on Amazon and probably at, you know, various video stores. Um, maybe not, I mean, you're not going to go to Walmart and find this, but... You know, you can track down DVD copies of this. And, yeah, I think just, you know... If you're a fan of Phantom of the Opera, if you're a fan of silent movies, if you're a fan of, you know, acting in general, this is definitely a film that's worth checking out. Even if you're just a fan of... Like, I started out a fan of the musical. You go back and... Retrace the roots, basically, of Phantom. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting, too. Yeah. It's a good watch. And, you know, Lon Chaney deserves recognition. Yeah, he does. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's about it for this. Just, you know, go check it out if it sounds like your thing. I mean, it is, you know, it is a silent movie, so if you're going to struggle with that, you know, that's fine. I understand that. I know some people can't watch silent movies. But, I mean, I think this is definitely worth a watch.